For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch. In this show, we bring you stories of resistance to capitalist and imperialist exploitation and the struggle by people's movements for a better and a more just world. We begin with a strike by the automotive workers in the United States. Over 49,000 workers of the automobile giant General Motors began a strike on Sunday. The strike led by the United Auto Workers was launched after contract talks with the company failed. UAW leaders of various local units met on Sunday morning after the 2015 General Motors collective bargaining agreement expired Saturday night and opted to strike at midnight on Sunday. Following a formal meeting of the GM Council consisting of local union leaders, the UAW announced that the workers are on strike to secure fair wages, affordable health care, share of profits, job security, etc. The World Socialist website said that General Motors, which made $27.5 billion in profits over the last four years, is demanding deep increases in workers' out-of-pocket expenses for health care from the current 3% to 15%. It also wants an expansion in the number of low-paid temporary and contract workers. On Monday, 46,000 GM workers at 35 manufacturing plants and dozens of parts distribution centers walked out on strike across 10 states. People's World reported that the workers of the Ford and Fiat Chrysler are also ready to strike if their union's negotiations with the companies fail. U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders tweeted on September 16th that GM CEO makes 281 times more money than the average worker, pays nothing in federal income taxes, and got a $514 million tax break from Donald Trump. He said he stands with the 49,000 GM workers who just went on strike and that together we are going to end outrageous corporate greed. Several trade unions in the country and abroad, including all the nine Brazilian national trade councils, American Federation of Government Employees, Service Employees International Union, Michigan Education Union Graduate Teaching Assistance Coalition expressed their solidarity with the striking workers of General Motors. In February 2019, GM had announced a plan to eliminate about 4,000 jobs across North America, including close to 1,300 jobs at the company's Warren Technical Center in Michigan. In November 2018 as well, the company had announced a shutdown of its assembly plants in Detroit Hamtrak in Michigan, Lordstown in Ohio and Oshawa in Ontario, putting 14,000 jobs at risk. Our next story is from Zimbabwe, where hundreds of doctors took to the streets of Harare on Sunday, demanding information on the whereabouts of the president of the Zimbabwean Hospital Doctors Association, Peter Magamboi. Magamboi is believed to have been abducted by state security agents. While raising the slogans, No Peter, No Work and Bring Back Peter, doctors marched to the office of President Emerson Munangagwa. However, the rally was stopped by riot police, who only allowed some leaders to pass through the barricade and deliver a petition to the president, demanding that Peter be released. Peter's abduction took place amid an indefinite strike by doctors under the ZHTA since September 3 to demand that the value of their salaries be restored. Since payment of wages in US dollars was abandoned and RTGS was introduced last year, the salaries of doctors and other civil servants has been reduced to 10% of their initial values. Soon after the strike action began, Peter Magamboi received a number of threats of abduction on phone. On Saturday night, Magamboi was abducted by three men believed to be agents of state security. At 10.19 p.m., he messaged on the ZHTA Junior Doctors WhatsApp group that he was kidnapped by three men. Since then, all efforts by the union to reach him have failed. The threat and abduction of union leaders has become increasingly common in Zimbabwe. This is even as the government, unable to resolve the economic crisis, is increasingly shifting the burden of its policy failures on the working class by eating into their wages. Following a successful three-day strike in June by teachers, Obert Masurare, the president of Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union of Zimbabwe, which led the strike, was abducted by armed men. He was stripped naked, tortured for hours, and then abandoned near a bush. In Magamboi's case, his sister has filed a habeas corpus application in the High Court. After hearing the lawyer's argument, the High Court judge ordered the Home Affairs and State Security Ministers to set up a team of investigators to determine his whereabouts and to rescue him. In Argentina on September 16th, 
thousands of high school and university students as well as teachers, human rights activists, social leaders and left-wing political leaders marched in the city of La Plata in the Buenos Aires province to commemorate 43 years of the Night of the Pencils. The survivors and relatives of the victims also demanded justice and trial of those involved in the abduction, torture and disappearance of 10 students on the night of September 16, 1973. The 10 high school students who were abducted from La Plata by state forces were brought to a clandestine detention centre. The majority of these students were activists in the Union of Secondary Students and had participated in the campaign to demand free transportation services for secondary education students during the civic military dictatorship of General George Rafael Videla and others. The whereabouts of six of the ten students are still not known. A few years after the return of democracy, Argentina established September 16th as the day for the reaffirmation of the rights of students so that the memory of these young people is not forgotten. The march this year was called for by the Union of Secondary Students and the Federation of Secondary Students. The students' organization said in an official statement, We claim our comrades detained, tortured and disappeared during the last military dictatorship, condemned for being young and activists who dreamed of a more just, free and sovereign nation. In their statement, the students' organizations also denounced the present right-wing government of President Mauricio Macri. In this regard, they added, Today we are in a country where those who govern us see our education as an expense and leave thousands of young people out of the classroom in hunger and poverty. The students also marched from Plaza Moreno to the Ministry of Infrastructure to draw attention to the problems facing public education due to budget cuts in recent times. And that's all we have for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. To read more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah,